Hello, everyone. Welcome to Zoom in China. In the world today, who does the CCP Chinese Communist Party hate the most? The United States. And who do they fear most? It is also the United States. Look at Hu Xijin Sima Nan, anti-American professor Chen Ping, who lives in the U.S., and the millions of Little Pink Army they lead, fighting for years and years in the front line of hatred of America. They are so absurd to people with common sense. However, what many people do not know is that more than 70 years ago, the CCP loved the United States to the most. What is even more unbelievable is that the party even publicly promised to establish American-style democracy in China. This is a long story. Well, before we start, please subscribe our program if you have not done so. Let's take a look at the following paragraph. Since childhood, we have found the United States to be a particularly friendly country. We believe that it is not only because she has never forcibly occupied Chinese territory, nor has she waged aggressive wars against China, but also, more basically, the Chinese people's good feeling towards the United States originate from the democratic manners, the generous heart that emanated from the American people. But above all this, the United States has been an example of pioneer in democratic politics to China, educating the Chinese people to learn from George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Abraham Lincoln, and to make us understand that making a democratic and free China requires boldness, fairness, and honesty. Ladies and gentlemen, who do you think when you see these words from over 70 years ago? It is not the first time in this program that we have mentioned it, and some of you who have seen our program may be able to recall it, but those of you who don't know the source may be curious to know who actually made such a clear statement. Would you believe it if I say it was not the comments of any popular author or the propaganda of the pro-American government then in power, but the words of the CCP? The vast majority of Chinese people reading this for the first time would surely think, I am talking nonsense. I would not blame you, because Chinese people living under the CCP's one-party dictatorship through years of indoctrination and brainwashing have long believed that the United States is a country that appears to be democratic, but is not really democratic not only waging wars all over the world, interfering in internal affairs of other countries, but also, and most importantly, the American has never given up the intention of overthrowing China. How can the CCP feel good about the United States? Even if some Chinese people have good feelings about the United States, how many of them are because of the democratic grace and generosity of the heart that emanates from the American nationality. Moreover, have any CCP leaders ever studied Washington, Jefferson, and Lincoln? When did the CCP ever learn from the United States about democratic politics? Unfortunately, the text is indeed from the CCP on July 4, 1943. That day was American Independence Day and the CCP published a breaking article in its official newspaper, Chongqing Xinhua Daily, titled Ode to Democracy, a Tribute to American's Independence Day. You may ask, why did the CCP publish the statement to embrace American democracy at that time? It turned out that the CCP, which was driven to a corner in the Northwest by the Nationalist Army, began to focus on foreign propaganda while using the opportunity of the Kuomintang army's fighting against the Japanese invasion to develop and strengthen itself. In the words of the CCP now, that was a strategic transformation. 
This was also thanks to the inspiration of an American. This American was Edgar Snow, an American journalist who, after visiting Yan'an in 1936, wrote the book Red Star Over China, which had a wide impact internationally. The effect of the book on the public opinion enlightened CCP and made them realize the importance of propaganda for overseas. As the little pink now often says, foreigners are stupid and easy to be fooled. When you cry over poverty, they will give you the money. When you cry over injustice, they will preside over justice and support you. When the CCP got some advantage from propaganda and found that it worked really well, then it vigorously developed this foreign brainwashing program. In order to cover up its fake anti-Japanese efforts and secret expansion during the war, enhance its status, and win the sympathy and support of Western countries, especially the United States, the CCP took every opportunity to invite Westerners, including journalists, to visit Yan'an. The party disguised themselves as an honest party working for people in front of these visitors. This tactic has been used until today to whitewash itself through Western public opinion. Nowadays, of course, it has been upgraded several times, especially many of the so-called Western media has long been infiltrated or manipulated by the CCP in reality. In the winter of 1937, under the careful arrangement of Zhou Enlai, Ivan's Fordyce Carlson, a U.S. Marine Corps intelligence officer and former deputy commander-in-chief of President Roosevelt's Guard, visited Yan'an and the 8th Root Army General Headquarters in Shanxi. In Yan'an, Mao and Carlson talked late into the night. And upon his return to the U.S., Carlson briefed President Roosevelt on CCP and Mao which later influenced the drift of U.S. strategy toward China. And the leftist American journalist Agnes Smedley, who was said to have special relations with Mao Zedong, also published several propaganda articles in the West, glorifying the Chinese Communist Party, misleading the Western political circles and the public impression of the CCP. In February 1938, Mao Zedong expressed his satisfaction with the public opinion at that time when he talked with Wang Gongda, a reporter for the United Press, and Mao said, the sponsorship of international peace by the American Democratic Party, the condemnation of fascism by President Roosevelt, the sympathy of the Strips Harvard newspapers for the Chinese resistance to Japan, and especially the solidarity of American people with the Chinese resistance to Japan are all welcomed and appreciated by us. At the critical moment when the Japanese invader was about to be defeated, in order to win greater support from the U.S. and restrain Chiang Kai-shek, Mao praised the U.S. more vigorously and took every opportunity to call for help. The CCP also developed the propaganda slogan about democracy and freedom to meet American taste. Mao found that such an ideological slogan not only conforms to Western values and conceals CCP's ambition to eliminate Kuomintang and seize power, but also can manipulate public opinion in China while showing goodwill to the U.S. On June 12, 1944, Mao gave a speech to Chinese people and foreign journalists in which the key word was democracy and he talked about democracy and attributed the fundamental way to solve all problems in China to democracy. Mao said, China has shortcomings, and they are great shortcomings. And these shortcomings, in a nutshell, is the lack of democracy. The Chinese people need democracy very much, because only with democracy will the resistance have strength. China's internal relations and external relations will get on track to win the war, to build a good country. Only with democratic unity can we defeat fascism, to build a new China and a new world.
Chinese people might feel that this speech was from anti-CCP activist, who, as the CCP labels, is inciting subversion of communist China, but it was actually from Mao Zedong. At that time, he wanted to overthrow Republic of China. The Xinhua Daily in Chongqing and Jiefang Daily in Yan'an both published numerous editorials and commentaries in praise of the U.S. The Xinhua Daily of September 12, 1943, published an article entitled "The Ideal of the American People and the Spirit of Democracy," quoting two lines from Andrew Morawa. I love America because here I see the glory of the freedom that makes human life noble. I love America because here I see that what is often the cause of war in other countries can be solved here in an orderly and democratic way. On July Fourth, 1944, the National Day of the United States, the Xinhua Daily published the editorial. Enthusiastically glorifying the United States, which we mentioned before, the editorial also linked Yan'an with the U.S., saying shamelessly that democratic America has its companion, and Sun Yat-sen's ideal has its successor in the form of the Chinese Communist Party and other democratic forces. The work we communists are doing now is the work that Washington, Jefferson. Lincoln and others have been doing in America for a long time, and it will certainly receive, and has received, the sympathy of democratic America. The United States is aiding vigorously the war against Japan, and the democratic movement in China, for which we are grateful. This editorial also ends with the chant, "Long live the Fourth of July! Long live democratic America!" Ladies and gentlemen, I got goosebumps when reading this, don't you? This is all for the first half of the episode of how the CCP deceived American government. Before you leave, please do not hesitate to subscribe, share, and like our channels. See you next time.